I got a new video for you today with Gary Sprint Repair, and I hope you find the video helpful, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you did, or if you do, feel free to give us a thumbs up like, because YouTube loves it when people get likes on their videos. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, and be sure to share this video with as many people as you know, because this is the new technology coming up, and pretty soon all sprinkler timers are going to be of this type. They're going to be Wi-Fi, and they're going to be something that you can control from your smart device, like your phone, your tablet, or your computer, and they'll automatically alter their watering based on the weather the previous day because they'll have internet access via your Wi-Fi. I think you're going to see it become mandated eventually throughout the states. Beehive Wi-Fi sprinkler timer. This one happens to be an eight. They come in six station and an eight station. I'm going to show you how to first put it up. Then I'm going to show you how to set or download the app. And then next I'm going to show you how to program it. Okay, let's start by opening the box. First thing you have to do on this box is on the back side right here below the sprinkler, cut the tape, then you can open it up. We're going to go ahead and open it on up, take the literature out, pull the timer out. Cool thing about this beehive timer is it has a picture frame holder and that's pretty much how you mount it to the wall. It does have two additional screw holes down here. This section on the bottom is for the wires to go in. To remove the lower section to install the wires, you just pry up on that lower panel, and there you go. And there's the easy to install sprinkler timer. And if we look here, we can see it has 24 volt AC on the left, so that's for our transformer. Far right is for a rain sensor. We're not gonna be installing one today. Next to that's the pump. So if you live out in the country and you're on a well and you need to turn the pump on first, you wanna make sure you run your hot lead up to your pump. If you don't have a pump, if you're just on city water, you won't need that. Next is common. The common is a white wire 99% of the time. On rare occasions, someone will run a different colored wire and that's what they all share at the valve location in common. So for today's uh, demonstration, we're gonna show that uh, we have a white wire as our common. And again, you can see between stations four and five and eight and the pump, there's a common position. And that's so if you have two different sets of wires, you're not trying to force them into the bottom here in the same hole. Uh, the timer's better equipped. And that's pretty cool when a timer does that, by the way. Uh, they give you two different spots for your common. I hate trying to cram them together in the same spot. So, and again, we can see from the left to the right, we got station one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That'll be all of our colored wires go on there. And then the corresponding other end of those colored wires will go on to the sprinkler valves and they all share the common. Okay, next we can see we have all of our wires installed. From left to right it goes black, red, yellow, purple, white in the middle for common, and then it goes brown, blue, green, orange. And that goes one through eight with between four and five being my common. And next we need to install over here, 24 volt AC. By the way, just in case you never did one of these before, um, you do want to make sure it's not plugged in before you start playing with the wires and trying to hook them up to the timer because you're going to touch the two leads together and get zapped or trip the circuit breaker or both. All right, so install it first, then plug it in. Let's get the transformer. Let's get it installed. Power leads are now connected. All we got left to do is hang the timer on the wall. The thing that comes with this timer just kind of makes it look a little dressier once it's installed. This little guy, it's just a clip. And if I turn it to the side, you'll be able to see how that works. There's kind of like a little lip on the front of here. You just go ahead and set it down over the top of that. And then once you put it on the timer here, you just go ahead and clip all that together and it holds all your wires in place. So, and I get them all down in there and it just kind of locks it in place. So, sorry about that. But you can see that's the finished product hanging on the wall. it look like that. It makes it look a little dressy. I'm gonna go over a few rundowns just real quick on this timer. Number one, you want to download the Orbit Beehive app off of your app store or whatever you use to download apps. Uh, uh, next is you want to create an account once you open up that uh, Beehive uh, app on your phone or device. Uh, 
uh, iPad or computer. Next, you're gonna scroll through the user agreement and choose accept. You're gonna allow notifications. I always do because that way you know if the timer's trying to let you know, like if it says it's not gonna be on tomorrow because of the fact that the supposed to be raining, like it'd be kind of nice to know that. So if you don't choose notifications, you won't know that. You'd just be kind of guessing as to why your timer didn't go off, especially if it quit raining before you got up. Uh, next thing we wanna do is choose the picture of the timer that we have. So that's pretty easy. Plug it in and now it shows the blue letter P and the center B on it will be blinking blue. Okay, now that we've turned the Orbit Beehive timer on, by plugging it in, it's now saying it's ready to pair. So at this point, if you haven't already done so, you need to make sure that your Bluetooth, if you're using your phone or your laptop or whatever it is you're using, your iPad, make sure that that Bluetooth is currently active. Select this matches my device off of the app. Once it finds it, and then choose your home or business Wi-Fi network name will be the next prompt it gives you. And scroll through the list till you find your Wi-Fi network. And then from there, you wanna go ahead and uh, enter your password. And I think it has you enter it twice. And then uh, next, you can do your entire address and all that stuff. But you know, some people are kind of paranoid about leaving their address and stuff on things, you know, especially when it's accessed via the internet. But again, this is running through your Wi-Fi, so nobody can really screw with it if your Wi-Fi is password protected. So I don't think there's a whole lot to be overly concerned with there. But, you know, uh, just to be on the safe side, if you don't really feel like giving your full address and everything, you can just it does require you to at least put in your zip code so it knows, you know, approximately where you're at. With the timer so it can give you weather updates. And then under, you want to go ahead and tap Programs. And once you tap the programs, you're gonna to choose to uh, smart water on, or you're going to uh, leave it in the on position, or you're gonna turn it off. Now what that means is if you turn smart water off, it's gonna force you to, uh, you know, it's not gonna let the timer do automatic updating and stuff like that for you. Um, so if you want it on, it will update, like if it knows it's supposed to rain tomorrow and you didn't, it won't let your timer come on. That's kind of cool. Uh, I kind of like to leave that on. It'd be worth checking it out anyway. And if you find it's too aggravating, you can always just go back to your app, open it up, uh, log in if it prompts you to do that if you've been out of it too long, and then go ahead and put in your username, password if that's what you got to do. And then um, go ahead and tap the smart water to be on. Uh, and again, if it's aggravating and you don't want it, tap the smart water off. Um, the other thing is, let's say you choose to just leave it on in the beginning. You want to then, um, under tapping programs, you want to select program A. So you're going to hit the slide to the right of that, and it'll move you to the next screen, and it says, name the program if you want. I don't really think I need to name which program it is, but I guess if you had different programs like A's for lawn, B's for plants, and C's for your vegetable garden, I guess you could name them if you want to. Uh, the next part is going to be at a start time. So you just tap that, go ahead and put in your start time, hit done when you're finished, and then um, add your zones. You can choose the zones one at a time. And then the last thing you want to do, make sure you hit save each time if it prompts for save. And then uh, the last thing you want to do is go ahead and choose which days of the week. You can choose by tapping them and turning them green, uh, dark green, because they're kind of ghosty green right now. And you'll see what that means when you get there. Um, but once you touch the days, they actually light up dark green. And if you want every other day, then choose the odd days or even days or interval. And interval is like if you literally want to water every two days. So it will water every two days regardless of odd or even. So that's what interval is on every clock, by the way. Um, hope you found this helpful today. And again, congratulations to uh, our winner for the month of July. Um, nobody won it, actually. I guess I should say Kane Beeping won it. He didn't respond, so we gave it away in August. And uh, Michigan Wildcat won it, and he did contact me. So 
Congratulations, now you're not only gonna have an eight station timer, wow, that's a big one, <laughs> and it's indoors, uh, and it's Wi-Fi. So it's on its way to you, and anybody else that wants to try to win something cool, be sure to like, share, and subscribe our videos, and the more people you get to subscribe, the more people in your family that can help you win. So I hope you found this uh, helpful, and uh, you guys have a good day, and take care.